guys, can I get a performance tip from both of you? Bearing in mind, this is the Performance People podcast and that's what people really want to glean and take away from it. I think for me, it's about making sure that whatever you set your your sights on, that you, you break it down into manageable chunks and that it's something that becomes each of those sort of small smaller stepping stones. You create the daily habits that you need to have to meet those targets. Uh, and don't be afraid to reassess what those stepping stones towards the bigger target look like because there is more than one way to reach that destination. Um, but yeah, breaking it down uh, and making sure that you develop those habits so that it isn't a forced thing and therefore you can develop the enjoyment of, of ticking things off your list. If you're trying to ultimately you know, have something that is performance related and something that you're going to actually stick to as well. It has to be fun. Because I think there's so many times we can, you know, there's only a limited amount of time you can do something that you don't enjoy. And I think that, that that's always kind of the, where you come down to longevity and in terms of performance as well. So rule number one, you have to enjoy what you do. That's doesn't matter you know, what performance level you get to, enjoyment is the most crucial part. What's it like living with Sarah, who is just so super high achieving? I mean, what, what, what is she like to live with? Um, You're going to use that word <laughs> relentless again, aren't you? Choose <laughs> so, several Choose words, words carefully, Barney. My advice. Just this. <laughs> it's usually, yeah, relentless comes up. Um extremely driven attention to detail and that kind of crosses over onto everything really um whether she's painting a wall or um uh you know in the house or, or whatever making she's a doing, bed. making a bed everything has to be uh, <laughs> i think i think most athletes i think all athletes have that um um the, the ability to kind of you know focus on very small details and make everything absolutely precise because you don't really get another chance to you know, to compete in a race, you don't, everything has to be very precise and get it right. So I think most, most athletes are, I think control freaks is a little bit too, um, a little bit too far-fetched, but uh, very, yeah, very close to that. But you're not a control freak anyway. Not of all well, that's good to hear. <laughs> well, Ben, making a bed, do, making a bed, painting a wall, do those things apply to you too? I thought you were going to looking to me about control freakery. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um no i'm not sure they do <laughs> but attention to detail yeah definitely i can i can understand that trait and uh i mean i was i was just fascinated sarah just as georgie says the accomplishments are, are, are incredible you're going through Olymp olympic cycles in my experience is a very tough thing you know finishing an olympics and then Oh, four years to the next games. I mean, what what was it? What did you use to motivate you and drive you through? I mean, you talked about the the PBs and so on, but was there anything else that that you that drove you forward? Um, in in my swimming career, I think uh, I won gold medals in the first two games, and there was always that striving to match that. And I missed out in Sydney. I'd not long since recovered from having chronic fatigue syndrome, so going to Athens was trying to kind of put the record straight and I just missed out. I think I must have picked up some virus, you know, village flu virus type thing and just missed out on gold again in, in Athens. Um, but then when I came into cycling, there was so many disciplines to learn. And every year we have a world championships in track and road and all the other disciplines as well. So every year there was an opportunity to, to try and win a rainbow jersey and to try and test yourself on a different course. And I think that's probably why my love of road racing comes in because it's so different and every year the courses are different um you know there's a new place to explore uh, and it's just a very different environment so I think that's what's enabled me to keep going over the last 17 years 18 years nearly in, in cycling yeah Sw switching sports must have been a great motivator in a way uh, to, to, to like you say to learn a new new techniques yeah I think um initially it was sort of I had immediate success in a sense that was quite a raw talent but there was a lot to kind of refine so that really appealed to that attention to detail that we were talking about um, and then um, as we got got in I started to get deeper into the the opportunities to improve and the way that I could test myself in a bigger peloton and different types of races and stage races stage races that were made up of different types of uh, events so some stage races incorporate team time trials others incorporate individual time trials hilly stages 
And then also the, the intermediate jerseys and, and other jerseys that are secondary to the leader's jersey of a stage race. So there's almost, you know, four or five different races going on within a stage race, um, as you see at the Tour de France and the Tour of Britain and, and other tours. So for me, being able to challenge myself in that environment and the women's peloton, uh, and then just before the games in London, I was racing and training with the women's team pursuit squad, trying to qualify the place for the Olympic Games. And then the team went on to win Olympic gold. So there's been so much variety that it was a case of, you know, trying to cram as much in as possible um, and and just, just seeing how good I could get at the different things that were on offer. Barney, is Sarah good in her own company? Yeah, she is. I think... I think going out in, or if you go out for six hours on your bike, I think you've got to be pretty happy with your own company. Because um, it's, well, other than talking to sheep or cows while you're going past them, I think it's that you've literally got yourself in your own and your own thoughts, you know, whilst you're out on your bike. So other than concentrating on, you know, the, the numbers that the bike is telling you from the, the information that it gives you, um, she often comes back with, if she's been out for a long ride, I know there's going to be an extensive list of things to talk about when she comes back. Yeah. So that's usually something that it uh, your brain goes on to like overdrive, doesn't it, when you've been out for a long ride? What's yeah, the typical so list look like? things to do, Barney. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does the, the typical list. list look like, Barney? Um, it depends, really. It, it's um, you quite you quite kind of focused on specific topics, aren't you? So you can, I think, think being able to kind of compartmentalize the this you know everything and basically put it into and this is kind of where Sarah's kind of cross over to concentrating on loads of different aspects within sport and within cycling within swimming concentrating on different and certain events requires kind of a different different thought and a different kind of box to kind of put everything in and I think that that then kind of carries over on to other aspects of of your life where you can literally you can go out and you can you know, you can fill in all your different filing cabinets in your brain with um, everything going on, and then, um, and then you know, put that into some sort of common sense when you get back. So, kind of, kind of therapy in a way. Then is it, Sarah, to you know, offload any of those issues, get them out of your head, and then come back and you dump them onto Barney. <laughs> 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 I like to think I'm trying to find solutions to the challenges. So, yeah. well, you know, when you get to that point where yeah. initially in sport, you maybe do big PBs, big, big jumps of improvement. Whereas in cycling, there seems to be so many different areas that you can move um, forward, but you have to be careful that you don't change too many things at the same time and not know which ones worked. So I tend to find that I'm sort of thinking deep down into you know, one concept that might be the first move to make next if we're looking for another, you know, small amount of time to shave off or um, could I race in this way in order to achieve this that would then come back towards this um, goal over here. And, um, you know, if there's a challenge that we're, you know, usually it's a time-based challenge. We haven't got enough hours in the day to fit everything in. So I come back with some, you know, harebrained scheme of how we're going to create more hours in the day um, and be able to do more things or how we're going to fit in what we need to fit in on the journey down to something else because we've realised that we need to do something else. So, yeah, quite often there's kind of this long ra rambling sort of route to get to something that's trying stuff out on the way. I think, you know, a lot of people look at sport and, and they see it as a very, and it is very privileged and, you know, it's a very privileged position to be in to be able to compete compete at um, elite level sport and and I think to be able to have um you know or being in that privileged position I think it um it it, it, it certainly there's so many of the lessons that Sarah would have learned you know in in that that unfortunate time it does make you resilient and also the fact that you know sport isn't a comfortable place to be and it and it never will be if you want to be comfortable, you know, go and have a, you know, sit in a relax in your garden or, you know, or go leisure cycling, like sport and competitive sport is not a comfortable place. So if if you, and, and a lot of people thrive on that as, as we have done and, and mm. do. And, and I think it, it's a, that, that's the trickiest thing I think for any kind of non sporty competitive sport people to understand is, is that is a, it is a little bit uncomfortable at points. Uh, but the rewards that come from being a little bit uncomfortable sometimes are very, very significant. <laughs>